Hi everyone, here's Abdul and today we have another uh, video where we discuss Chinese watches where I will um, yeah, discuss two of the Chinese watches that I have and two that I am uh, being lent from Mario and um, yeah, I will discuss if it's uh, a good buy at the moment or not so anyways, uh, if you are new to this channel, I always uh, make a video on Wednesday, German video, and a uh, English videos on Friday and Sunday, uh, all at 4 o'clock uh, Central European time, so be sure to uh, check, it, check them out. Uh, if you like this kind of content, like I said, please do leave a like, also subscribe, and yeah, if you have any suggestions on changing format, changing uh, 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 camera angle, any kind of suggestions are always welcome. Uh, learning is a part of the process and uh, we all need to learn and improve ourselves. So always open for feedback from you guys. So going back to the topic of the day, Chinese watches, are they any good? Like the title said. By the way, I'm wearing my non-Chinese watch, <laughs> my Explorer 2 on the Robert B. And uh, I'm discussing this because uh, I get a lot of uh, questions from from friends uh, of the channel, friends of mine, and uh, about um, are these watches worth it? Um, I bought this for around 150, 150 euros as well from uh, AliExpress. It took about a couple of weeks to come. And uh, yeah, there is a lot of issues or small issues with the watch. But I have to say, for the biggest part, um, I was truly surprised by the quality and the finish of the Seagull, to be honest. Um, if I would recommend any watch from a Chinese maker, I would definitely recommend this uh, Seagull. I'm trying to get the best lighting possible. Um, bear with me, guys. Maybe I'll have to put this a bit down like this. Uh, I think that's a bit better. Yeah, with the light. Yes, I think that's a bit better. I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, uh, getting some equipment. I wasn't planning on getting more equipment until I reach uh, another milestone, but uh, I reached, I think, 500 subscribers, so I bought me some couple of lighting and, and, and uh, new leather and stuff like this, and I wanted to buy the next one in the next milestone with 1,000 subscribers, but uh, yeah, the lighting is, is definitely something that's irritating, so I'm sorry if you if this irritates you. Uh, going back to, to, to the watch, uh, you get a chronograph, you get a screwed down, no, not a screwed down, and, and a see through case back, which is uh, quite nice, uh, to be honest. Uh, it's not the best movement that you can watch, but it's very uh, uh, engaging. You can see here the column wheel, chronograph, stop, start, restart. You have here the restart. Restore hand, you can look at it here. I oh, have to stop it first, and then you look at the restart. Just went down and restarted it. And here we go. And uh, they had like the panda and the reverse panda. I got the reverse panda. Um, I actually should have got the panda because I, li I really like the, the white black, but I, I'm, I'm very happy with this choice as well. I, I, I put it on a white strap, it looks really nice. I can put it on this gray uh, parallel. It looks really good. And it's one of the watches that uh, was actually keeping quite quite good time, I have to say. Uh, I can actually get here the time grapher and put it on the time grapher and look uh, what's it doing. So I put the watch on the time grapher and I'll leave it a little bit to, to stabilize. And we go to the next watch. I, I don't have any experience with this watch because it's not mine, it's Mario's. And he sent me to regulate it. I just wanted to edit the video to tell you that even SKXs, which was one of the most or the most affordable tool watch, like real tool watch that you can buy, that you can go diving uh, uh, and uh, be dependent on the watch and be sh be uh, to be somehow sure that the watch will work. Um, in this case, in this Heimdaller case, I'm not sure, to be honest. You can see the bezel is moving 
really, really bad. Uh, uh, the crown is is fitting, but when you get it out, it's it's a little bit wobbly, to be honest. And uh, yeah, until now, Heimdollar was selling their watches more expensive than the other makers, but I think they all come from the same manufacturer. So I don't know why they are uh, uh, asking for more money if everything is the same. And, and you can see this in, in this case. When you look at the Heimdollar uh, SD, uh, or they call it here the 6105 limited edition, and the SD1970. So basically the Captain Willard homage both are almost identical the only thing you can see here is that the bezel here is fully loomed while here the bezel is only loom pip loom the loom here is stronger than here but you have here a full dial loom full dial loom and full bezel loom which makes the watch very very visible at night so definitely definitely one of these watches that you want to wear at night to enjoy thickness same thickness uh, even the brushing on the back side is very similar as you can see here I'll, I'll just take this watch out as well here we go you have here vertical brushing and you have here vertical brushing you have the difference is that you can see that this is a bit more sporty as the back other than that, same movement, NS35A, NS35, I think that's A as well. You have the date only. Sapphire glass, sapphire glass, 200 meter water resistant, 200 meter water resistant, ceramic, bezel, ceramic bezel. The big difference here is that you can see this misalignment, yeah, and action the bezel action is for me this this is just exactly what i want from a bezel just not this it doesn't have any back play per se but it's not i cannot even make it at the 12 has and here you can see that it's much harder to like i'm really pushing the bezel It's really 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 um, fixed and I don't like this but like I said better too, too fixed than too loose uh, it's really not comfortable to 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 make to yeah to switch and here we can see that minus 15 333 amplitude, 0 0.4 millisecond beat rate. We could put also the other watches to check how they're running. You see, restart it because there are different movements. So when you're always using a time grapher between movements, restart it because you won't get a, a correct parameter. If you also just winded this watch, you would get something like this. That's why you have to always leave the watch a little bit to wind down. As you can see, it started by plus 20, plus 4, plus 5. And I think, um, yeah, Chinese watches um, are something that uh, we will see more and more in the future. I'm just uh, sure of it. Because uh, manufacturing uh, in China is getting, it's getting actually better from a perspective of a consumer because you had different um, different types of, of, of making. So you have uh, uh, people that are getting as much money from technical work in China as in Germany, uh, which people would be like, what? But at the same time, the quality and the finishing is great. And as you can see, zero. Zero rates, zero seconds per day, which is quite good. But the beat error here is 0 0.8 millisecond. Which is quite high, sorry guys. Which is quite high, but uh, yeah.
just like I said, I just wanted to show you guys uh, the options that you have if you are looking to get a Chinese watch, especially a watch that affordable watch, let's say, because I don't know if you're buying a uh, if you're buying a fake, which I don't recommend. I don't think that you are. You will be happy with your choice. Let's say that if you're buying a fake, you're only kidding yourself. The people who know that this is a fake, they will know that it's a fake. Because uh, uh, let's face it, um, if you're always wearing uh, fakes or wearing something like this, that that shows uh, what kind of person you are. Anyways, coming back to our topic, Chinese watches. So I would definitely recommend them for the people um that wants the a cheap watch an affordable watch in their means 200 euros something like this 200 dollars you can get something from from these watches and i think you'd be very happy with with the choice you made even with the small yeah small stuff that annoys me like the bezel uh, misalignment or that this one is really loud when you put it next to your ear or wear it uh, in a quiet room uh, but all this comes with a price. You cannot compare it to a watch that costs thousands of dollars, thousands of euros, because uh, the, the the cost of manufacturing is totally different. The cost of, of, of the material is totally different. The cost of, uh, of the shipping, everything is different. So, like I said, if you are interested in buying a Chinese watch, what I do recommend for dress watch or office watch is the Seagull. Uh, 1963 I didn't try these two yet but until now I really like my steel dive the ST1970 and uh, it's done everything I wanted from it regulated it to quite uh, a good degree so like I said these two are the ones I can recommend these two I didn't like this one is exactly the same but I would definitely go for the steel dive more than the Heimdaller and the SKX, I don't know. I wouldn't buy a, wouldn't buy this one. The, the bezel is just moving around, and I, I don't feel comfortable wearing it in a situation where it might get broken. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. I hope I uh, I give you some benefit from the video. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please do leave a like, also subscribe, and hopefully we will see you in the next video. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.